My name is Arlene. I'm 38 years old. Tell me three words that best describe you. Happy and um, courageous, strength. What do you value most? I value my family. Um, they're everything for me. And that's why I'm fighting this disease. What are some activities and hobbies that you enjoy? Um, go out in the park with my kids and just play with them, basketball, um, just in the grass, laying around picnic, go in the beach, by walk. That's, um, that's amazing for me. That's ha happiness for me. I was diagnosed 2018. I have two kids uh, which are seven and nine. I was MBC last year, and December 2021, um, metastasis in the brain. And I did uh, surgery and radiation for three days. And I'm here now, I'm back. I'm working in the pharmacy, and um, I'm happy to help anyone who, who's going through with this situation. And I would like all the, all the necessary things for, for those who are diagnosed like me to, to have the strength and find the courage to, to lift each other up. Like it's not the end. They say it's terminal and there's no solution for it. But we are to be with each other and take, of it, take the strength to each other. I'm working in the pharmacy um, and um, I realized that I have headache and I, I started driving. So I was about to hit a car, but we didn't have the accident. But then it has some pain here, like muscle tension or something. So I went to the ER, but then they didn't do the CT scan. So, and they said, oh, it must be like muscle, muscle tension will give you like a muscle relaxer. So they gave me muscle relaxer after two weeks it's still it's there and I didn't drive and I was like this is something else I couldn't see properly I couldn't walk properly and um, it's blurry and they said it's it's a golf size uh, tumor in my uh, right temper uh, right cere cerebellum so they said we have to take it out and um, you have to do the radiation and the first thing came in my mind like am I gonna survive this like, you know, is it the end? Like, that's when, and they're just like, you know, medically, they are flat. Like, they don't tell you nothing else in, other than you're diagnosed. They don't tell you, like, we're here for you, you know. Like, the sympathy is not there compared to the oncologist. And from a golf size, it changed to uh, um, grape size when they removed the golf size. Uh, tumor and now it's shrinked to a smaller um, like a 0.7 cm it's very small now it's re it's regress after all the tests they did with the contrast and everything thank god but I'm not stressing myself anymore about if there's a scan or there's not you know it will come I, I, I used to worry a lot but now I, I'm just setting everything free yeah, before I was like, oh my God, just live your life to the fullest. That's the, that's the thing I've learned from this journey. Like, you know, it can't be difficult, but it's difficult when you letting other people come on you and decide for you, which is wrong. You decide what you want, what, what, you will, what will make you happy, what will make you strong, it's all up to you. Not for like, oh, she's gonna be sad. Oh, she's, she's gonna be upset with me. I don't care no more about this stuff, you know. But I, I, I straight away say it in front of you that this is me. And if you don't like me, that's okay. If, you, if you're happy with me, that's okay too. <laughs> There's a group, local group in, in my community where they meet like once a month. They all are cancer survivors, but not MBC. 
I still haven't navigated that in my community. But this uh, group of ladies, um, they try to meet like every two months, every three months, when everybody is available, because they all come in walks of life. Like they, there's some engineers, it's all different type of people I, over there in New York. It's very diverse. And it's amazing to, to be with other ladies and, you know, share your ideas and they'll share their ideas with me. There's nothing I, I, sh I hide with them. I tell them everything. I'm looking for to see my kids get married. And... Um, to grow like a, I don't want them to be like um, educated, educated, like we're in, we're in America, like you gotta be educated, like you're gonna be in Harvard. Like, no, it's, it's okay to have a simple dream. It doesn't devastate me, but I'm happy with them, whatever they choose and be humble because that's what I'm gonna leave them, to be humble and to be kind to other people. Fears is I can't manage the coming back. So I try to be more in the protected area and <laughs> the comfort zone. So I have to like change everything in, in one night. Like December I was diagnosed, I changed all the menus. Like I used to eat a lot of rice because I'm Asian and Asian love rice, you know. So I used to eat all of those, whatever I do, everything, anything like to be a diabetes, <laughs> to get up. Because uh, in my in my country, it's like, you know, it's our, it's in our genes to have diabetes. Because we eat too much sweet, we eat too much anything, it's oily, cholesterol, <laughs> anything. After my first diagnosis, I said, oh, it's only one life, you know. <laughs> So I eat everything, whatever, and that messes up my remission. And then I realize, oh, I have to be careful now. And so I, I transform it to my kids and tell them that, hey, you have to look out for the veggies because <laughs> they don't like it, especially my, my younger one, you know. It's very difficult for them. To, that's why I make it juice, like to juice it, I try to make a, like, little sweet like kiwi or something apples so they they would like it <laughs> and encourage them that being healthy is okay i mean it's one of the best health is wealth as they said in the in the praise hope other ladies who are uh, I'm, who are on the same situation, and um, I'm happy to see everyone, and I feel more um, alive when I see other ladies like me going through with this. Like they look like normal, like you know, hey, I could look like that too. <laughs> I cannot imagine this for ladies uh, that they will go through with this situation. They don't deserve it. I, I can't imagine it. To my kids, to especially I have a daughter, I don't want them to, to have this kind of sickness. That's why I tell them, don't stress yourself. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, <laughs> you know, because I've been through it and I don't want other people to have it because no one deserves this kind of um, end of life like they say it's terminal it's up to you how you're gonna stand out of it so I can imagine other ladies will be in this situation and I can imagine like um, if everybody just be cancer free I mean I'll be happy you know I mean it's it's growing population and unbelievable um, 
like they don't have yet kids and you know they they don't want to like they see their end of life they don't want to freeze their eggs and i don't like that uh, you know it means it's the end no it's not the end try to think positive out of it and it's gonna be easier which is i do <laughs> <laughs>